Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to look at the very last thing I did for uh, Robot Havoc 3 this year. And to start with, we're going to look at what I did last year for Robot Havoc 3. And that is this guy, a balloon popping robot. This was one of two that I made for last year. I also made a four wheel drive uh, lockjaw inspired design last year, uh, but that is curiously absent at the moment. And then this thing was a uh, thrown together YOLO drive design. And the reason that the Lockjaw inspired design isn't here uh, is because these things were ridiculously overpowered. They both had beta weight or higher level drives in them uh, and they were given to children to drive around in an attempt to pop balloons. But what ended up happening was they either tornadoed tornado drive so they just spun around in the spot as fast as they possibly could and then slammed into something or they drove them head first into the wall and slammed into something aka the wall um, and they broke quite a lot the um, the Lockjaw inspired one was a 3d printed chassis uh, 3D printed in three parts and glued together within the first hour or so the glue points all broke and I kind of duct taped it hazardly back, haphazardly back together and got it working again, uh, only for it to work most of the rest of the weekend and then me get home, pull the duct tape off and find cracks in every single piece of the 3D printed chassis. Uh, by the time I would pulled all the duct tape off, I was sitting there with a pile of parts, not the three that I had glued together, but just a mound of broken plastic. Uh, so, this year I decided that I needed to do something different uh, with these balloon popping robots, basically scale back the power quite a lot uh, and also up the rigidity on these. So I uh, built these leading up to Robot Havoc 3 uh, and took a GoPro along with me. So the version 2 balloon poppers are made from 6mm laser cut MDF. This is to help with the rigidity and also with the build speed. These need to be glued together, which is literally just lathering glue onto them and then uh, pushing them in together. I don't bother about cleaning off any of the burnt edges. It doesn't ever seem to matter with uh, wood glue. And then once it's all glued up, you simply clamp it and leave it basically overnight, I found was best. Once it's all glued up and set, it's pretty solid at this point, and it's next time to sand down all of the rough patches. So first off, sanding down the wedge and sanding the bottom flat so that it actually rides properly along the ground, and then sanding down all of the sides just to kind of get rid of any imperfections in the laser cutting and maybe sand off some of the tabs and bits and pieces like that. Once it's all sanded and done like that, it's time for a paint job and I started with some very light undercoat so that I could get some really nice poppy colours going on over top. Once the chassis is painted, it is time for the full assembly. As mentioned at the start of this video, I was going to make these a lot uh, less powerful than the last version, so I opted for N20 gear motors for drive. So this here is everything that is going to go into the robot. So as I mentioned, N20 gear motors for drive, two knives, uh, some gears, to some output gears so that the N20s themselves aren't directly connected to the wheel, basically because I know kids would break that setup. Uh, a custom ESC, which is just because that's the only ESC I had for these, a receiver, the base itself, some clamps for the N20s, and a top plate. There is also an extra piece not shown here, but that is literally just a uh, motor mount that is glued inside the chassis. So there is a trick to building these, and it was basically a bit of an accident. The knife is just long enough to mount between the drive axle and one other hole that was actually designed for standoffs uh, in the robot that never actually got used. So the trick to building this is to mount up the wheel first, and then screw down the extra screw to lock the knife blade in place. You can then take the other wheel out, 
which allows you to go ahead and mount up the N20. It's important to mount up the N20 fully before you mount up the wheel so that you can actually get the gear in place correctly. It's also uh, important to get the front screw done before you mount up the N20 to allow you to actually uh, screw that screw down properly and tighten it properly without the N20 in your way. Once you've got all of that together, then you can actually put on the final wheel and uh, tighten all of that down. And it's literally just a case of repeating that whole process on the other side to get a robot basically up and running. Once you have both N20s, both wheels, both knives, everything in place, all you need to do is mount up your electronics. So plug in your ESC, and your receiver and your battery and all of that kind of stuff. Actually, that's not that was what was not in the thing at the start. It was a battery and a wiring loom, but those are also needed. There you go. Uh, but yeah, you mount all of that stuff up and then screw down the lid to finish it off. And I did that process or most of that process four times. Well, okay, the full build I only did two. I did Cosmo and Wanda here uh, in the middle and got them to fully rolling chassis ready to go in. Uh, the blue one and the orange one, which remain unnamed, uh, yeah, I didn't do the blue one at all. This one, even the uh, the 3D printed part in here that's supposed to be glued in isn't actually glued in. Um, and then the orange one, I didn't do this one. Uh, Steve, one of my fellow competitors, built this up at an event and put his own electronics inside of it, which uh, at the event, I should say, put his own electronics inside of it, which was quite nice of him. Uh, however, after all of that, uh, they didn't see much use. This is the only clip I have of them in action. Oh, one of the, yeah, one of the gears has popped off. Hang on. Which is not a lot. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I didn't have enough of them. Uh, I literally only had two or three and you saw there was another one in there built by Jamie, which he built his own version uh, completely independently of all of the stuff that I did here. Uh, they didn't work all that well. The N20 drive system struggled. And uh, thinking back on it now, I believe that's because I've got a one-to-one -one gearbox system here. Uh, basically, I just wanted a gearing system so that the N20 wasn't directly in or directly controlling the wheel, which meant that the N20 was gonna get less force on it when the kids inevitably drove them headfirst into a wall. Uh, but that means that these 50 to one N20s, which are normally, I normally use to run 150 gram robots are now running three times that weight and on a wheel twice the size uh, that would normally run. So effectively we're asking eight times the amount of power out of the same motor uh, and they couldn't hack it. So uh, I think if I'd actually geared these down, they yes, weirdly they would have gone faster because there would be more torque behind the robot so we could actually get up to speed and uh, move quicker. Um, as it was, they were a little bit too slow, they were a little bit unreliable, uh, and yeah, they didn't actually end up going fast enough to really pop balloons, which is the thing I designed them to do. Wah, wah. <laughs> um, so I need to redesign these and redo these. I really, I, I did like the way that the knife blade gets held in with one of the bolts that hold it in also being the bolt to drive the wheel on. I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, I just need upgrades. I just need to upgrade the motors that drive everything in here uh, and or changing these gear ratios over. I think that's also possible, um, like I said, but it, yeah, they didn't work as well as they could have worked and I was a little bit sad about that. Also, I just need to build more of them. Uh, we were doing uh, COVID groups through because uh, at the time we had been months and months and months without COVID, but we were still having you know some COVID restrictions in place. Uh, so that meant that we were doing like groups of eight because we had to separate people around the arena and we could only do that many, uh, but we were filling up all of our groups. So uh, most of the time they were running the lone robots, which are just ant weights, um, in the arena because yeah, 
there was too many people to try and run only three or four robots at a time. So realistically, I need to do this again. I need to do it better with better motors, potentially cheaper motors too, because I think I know what I want to try in these next. Uh, and I think that we can, um, yeah, do it cheaper and better and more powerful in these next. Uh, and then I just need to mass build these, which is good because these things are designed to be mass built. The laser cutting takes like 20 minutes to do four of them. So I could easily build a bunch of these really quickly. I just need to be a little bit more prepared next year. Uh, and I will be a little bit more prepared next year. The other thing I think I'm gonna do too is maybe point the knives down. At the moment they're pointing up with the serrations up like this, but I'm thinking if I point them down, it would trap a balloon and pop it going into it that way. Uh, yeah. And actually what we're gonna do is I'm going to do a little uh, quick drive of these myself because uh, yeah, it, they, didn't, they didn't really show much of that clip because I didn't really have much of that clip. So let's put this guy on the floor, blow a balloon up and see if we can actually pop the balloon taped to the floor with this thing. Actually, maybe I'll tape one to wander. Uh, I don't know, I'll see. I'm gonna throw this down and I'm gonna do some test footage because I feel like, uh, you know, we've done a lot of talking about these robots and not actually a lot of using them. So there we go, that's that's what I meant. They're kind of useless. And I think it's a couple of fold problem. One, while I think it's like an interesting idea to mount the knives out the side here and the way I've managed to do that with only two bolts and everything is quite cool. Uh, I believe the knives, the knives are slanted down a little bit, which is popping the balloon up rather than popping the balloon. Uh, maybe if we'd flip them over and they'd like trapped the balloon under the point, maybe they would have had a chance to pop the balloons. Uh, speed is definitely an issue, like speed and torque are definitely an issue which we can upgrade with a motor upgrade. Um, yeah, on the whole though, they are not fit for purpose, which of course is to pop balloons and get kids interested in combat robots and coming back and building and doing all those kinds of things. So. We need to do a version two, uh, and we will. Sorry, version three, technically, because this guy, this guy's our version one, uh, which worked a lot better. And in actual fact, I might steal this method of um, attaching the knives, because this worked out quite well. Having the knives up high and splayed out where the serrations of the knife can get into balloons, this worked out amazingly well. And it also allows kids to do a, uh, Wow, that was louder than expected. Uh, but it allows kids to drive up and do a little flick turn to poke the knife directly into the balloon, uh, which is not something you can do with this kind of setup. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll upgrade these, we'll improve them, we'll do a round three for Havoc, uh, for Robot Havoc 4, uh, and hopefully we can do a better job. And also if I start on this early enough this time round, we can maybe get the whole thing done and have eight or 10 of these going at the same time, which would be really, really cool. 
Uh, and yeah, I might even make the next versions a little bit wider too. I kind of uh, went a little conservative on the size of these. Mostly they were uh, kind of copied in design from the Indestructible Beetle. I had that beetle designed, so I kind of just cloned that to get these guys. Uh, but I might go a little bit wider so you can comfortably fit two balloons or maybe even three balloons along the back of the thing. Uh, and I think that's gonna work out quite, quite nicely. Uh, anyway, there you go. That's I think is going to be it for today. They didn't work, but sometimes, you know, things don't. Uh, so we learn from those experiences. We move on and we build something better. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.